What's up, gang? Welcome to another exciting episode of 16 Steps. My name is Jason, and I am your host. And today, we're going to go over the Allen & Heath ZR16. See you on the other side of this. Starting with the back of the unit, we have a power switch, an AC outlet, and a fuse. Over here, we have two Firewire 400 jacks, switches for ADAT operation, and sample rates for ADAT use. There's MIDI out, as well as ADAT in and out. On the front of the board, we see all of the inputs and outputs up at the top of the mix section. Each channel has an XLR input, then a quarter inch balance line in, followed by a tip ring sleeve insert jack. Below that, we see a 48 volt phantom power switch, a gain knob, and a switch for a high pass filter. Moving on to the EQ section, we have a high, two sweepable mids, and a low, plus a switch for EQ on and off. Then we have four sends, two pre-fader, two post-fader, as well as a pan knob. Below that is a track mute switch and a pre-fade listen switch. And next there is an indicator light for present signal and clipping signal. Then we have switches to send the signal to the left-right mix. Below that, we have routing switches which allow us to send and return signal to and from the computer. Each channel can be recorded individually and also have recorded audio sent back to the channel. The first switch is for sending the audio signal to the DAW post-EQ. What this means is that the audio comes in through here and is sent to the computer just after the EQ, which is here. If the switch is not engaged, then the signal enters here, gets gained, and a clean signal is sent straight to the computer. This is where the audio is normally recorded from. This is like the normal mode with no switches depressed. Hit post EQ to record the analog EQ. The audio is recorded from here. The next step we have digital return pre insert and digital return post EQ. This allows for bringing the signal back from the computer after processing. That means the sound can come in here, then go to the computer, then back into the analog domain here. You can choose if you want that signal to come back into the board before the insert point or after the EQ. What I really like is that you have the ability to track a clean signal and then edit and affect the audio in the computer. You can then play it back through the analog mixer and adjust levels in that domain, then record your summed analog mixes. It's also cool that you can switch the fader to MIDI mode and use the faders as a control surface for mixing inside of your DAW if you prefer that in-the-box sound. You can assign the faders inside of your DAW. This brings us to the MIDI section. There are 12 knobs that can be assigned in your DAW. Then there's a section here with transport controls. Super useful. Then there's a section with four assignable MIDI faders.
over here there are eight configurable switches. Some cursor left right switches, an increment switch, a shift key, which also adds extra functionality to the other switches. Now we move to the stereo input section, as well as the studio monitor feeds, which is here. Uh, we have four stereo channels that are able to be sent to the left right mix. However, these four channels aren't individually tracked like the channels 1 through 16. These knobs control the volume instead of a fader. Uh, you get a pan, a high, a low EQ, as well as two aux sends. These are the studio monitor feeds. You can use these for creating different mixes for musicians, like in different rooms. And the switches will then allow you to select what goes on to those mixes. These are the levels for the auxiliary sends. Each one also has a pre-fade listen, so you can hear the signal that you're sending to your effects. Here we see the inputs for the stereo channels. Stereo 1 and 2 each have a pair of RCA jacks, as well as a pair of quarter-inch jacks. Stereo 3 and 4 each have quarter-inch jacks for left and right. Up here we have stereo outs for the studio monitor feeds, and that is this section here again. Up here we have the output jacks for each of the auxiliary send channels. Uh, big XLRs for the two track one out. Quarter inch for the two track two out. Next are the TRS jacks for the inserts on the mains. Now these are awesome to have because they're inserts on the main mix. So this is used to send your entire mix to like a bus compressor or a limiter before it goes out or gets recorded. And then over here we have the control room left and right, the alt speaker left and right, which is cool if you have multiple speakers. There's an RCA 2-track input and a quarter inch 2-track in. Here is your meter with a power and a PFL, AFL, active LED. 2-track um, routing section. Then the talkback section with knobs for level, a mic, and a button. And here you can select where you want your talkback to go. Moving down to the master section, we have a control for headphone level and some two-track routing. There's a control room level. Here's the mono switch, which I love. This is essential for checking mono compatibility on your mixes. You can just hit the button and see how your mix is going to sound on a mono PA. And I love that this is included. Next is the alt speaker out, which comes out up here. And this is if you have two types of speakers to check your mixes on. Hit the switch and route the mains to a different set of speakers. There's also quarter inch and eighth inch jacks for headphones, which is cool. And this is the switch for the digital master to left right, which will output the main mix of your DAW to the left right bus. And here's a final look at the Zed R16 by Alan and Heath. Um, in my next video, I'm going to show you how this interfaces with the computer and how I do some recording. Okay, so that is about it for that mixer. Um, you got to see the uh, physical details of it and also some uh, ways that I use it. Um, I've been using this mixer now for probably four or five years, um, and it's been an awesome mixer. It's totally changed the way that I work. Um, I prefer working on a mixer, but I also like to use a computer. This mixer is very underrated, but I think that it, it still holds up today, um, even though it's been out for a while. Okay, well, I'm in camouflage because I am uh, going out to a show and I don't want to be seen. Um, so, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Until then, peace.